God bless you, everyone. My name is David Ewan, and I head up the Bravehearted Ministries at the Resurrection Center with Pastors Jose and Melly Martinez, located at 1060 Worcester Street in the Indian Orchard area of Springfield, Massachusetts. Our website is resurrectionspringfield.org. Let's begin. Imagine me on the drums, and I'm not a musician, but I play in a way that makes zero sense. You see, if I were a good drummer, everyone stays together in the band. If I'm a bad drummer, everyone is confused. It's all disorganized. It's in a total disarray. You see, a band is like a church, and the drummer is the church leader with sound doctrine. Say to yourself, sound doctrine. See, good sound doc doctrine, the church stays together. It makes sense. Bad sound doctrine, the church falls apart. So we're going to talk about sound doctrine and that there's no other doctrine than the one God has provided for us. Again, my name is David Ewan and I head up the Bravehearted Ministries at the Resurrection Center. I welcome you and I bless you. Uh, today's topic is no other doctrine. And the topics of discussion will have five pieces to the agenda. The first one is I will give the definition of doctrine. Next, what we'll do is we'll read and then we will understand 1st of Timothy chapter 1, verse 1 through 10. So the key scripture today is 1st of Timothy chapter 1, verse 1 through 10. Then we'll talk about the reasons to love sound doctrine, the reasons to love sound doctrine. After that, we'll talk about how we can discern the false Christians of today. And then finally, we'll talk about the 10 facts about false teachers that we find in the church. So let's begin. We're gonna start with um, our first topic. Let me tell you first about Timothy. Timothy has a special relationship with the Apostle Paul and it shows in the Bible. See, Apostle Paul sent two epistles or two letters to Timothy. Um, in the first and second uh, letters that uh, Apostle Paul sends to Timothy, we see Apostle Paul's expectations of Timothy. Say to yourself, expectations. This young church leader is specifically responsible for maintaining Paul's standard of teaching. Standard of teaching is sound doctrine. So, um, and this was in the church of Ephesus. So we're talking about letters from Apostle Paul to Timothy. There were two letters that we know of, first and second of Timothy. Timothy was a young church leader and he was sent to Ephesus to make correction and to teach sound doctrine. And that was in the church in Ephesus. So that's what the story in the Bible is about, okay? So let's talk about sound doctrine. Sound doctrine, well, I should say the word doctrine, let's talk about the word doctrine. It comes from the Latin word doctrine, doct I can't even say it right, <laughs> doctrina, that's what it is. And it means teaching or instruction. You may have heard of the word document because that's a written form of doctrine. Okay, so doctrine is a set of beliefs of a body of teachings or instructions taught principles or positions as the essence of teachings in a given branch of knowledge or in a belief system. So there are two things. There's teachings and principles. And that's what the Bible provides us. With sound doctrine, the real word from God, we get teachings, not only teachings, but we also have principles to live by. The benefit of those principles from sound doctrine is it manifests itself into blessings. Did you hear me say blessings? Yes, it's the thing that we want. 
It's the thing that I want. So that's why it is important that we follow sound doctrine through the teachings and the principles within the Bible. Okay, so Paul, the Apostle Paul, sent two letters to Timothy as a set of teachings and principles. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to read 1st of Timothy, chapter 1, verse 1 through 10. Okay, so here it is. I'm going to read it. 1st of Timothy, chapter 1, verse 1 through 10. And it reads, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the command of God our Savior and of Christ Jesus our hope, to Timothy, my true son in faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Timothy charged to oppose false teachers. That was the first instruction, to oppose false teachers. Verse 3. As I urge you when I went to Macedonia, stay there in Ephesus so that you may command certain people not to teach false doctrines any longer. So he had to tell people, stop the foolishness. Verse four, verse four, or devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies. Such things promote controversial speculations rather than advancing God's work, which is by faith. The goal of this command is love, which comes from a pure heart and good conscience and a sincere faith. Some have departed from these and have turned to meaningless talk. Meaningless talk. Verse 7. They want to be teachers of the law, but they do not know what they are talking about or what they so confidently affirm. They're confused. They have no idea. Verse 8. We know that the law is good if one uses it properly. Remember, we talked about sound doctrine in the teachings and principles. Verse 9. We also know that the law is made not for the righteous, but for the lawbreakers and rebels, the ungodly and sinful, the unholy and the irreligious, for those who kill their fathers or their mothers, for, their sec for the sexually immoral, for those practicing homosexually, for slave traders and liars and perjurers, and for whatever else is contrary to the sound doctrine. Again, say sound doctrine to yourself, okay? So now let me break down Timothy, first of Timothy, chapter one, verse one through 10, okay? So we spoke about it, we read it, now we're going to break down just the parts that relate to my conversation to you today about sound doctrine. So the Apostle Paul says to Timothy, stay there in Ephesus, that's where it is, so that you may command certain people not to teach false doctrines any longer. That part about not to teach false doctrines is they were not teaching from the word of God. And when he says not to teach false doctrines any longer, that means it's been happening for a while and it must stop now. That's why Timothy was sent to Ephesus. Number two, the goal of this command is love, which comes from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. What do I mean by that? And I'm gonna give you a different type of example. Uh, the words used is out of love. And what is love? L-O-V-E. Let our, let our voices encourage. So what do I mean by L-O-V-E, love? Let our voices encourage. It's an action. To encourage is an action. It's not something you do for yourself. It's something you do for others. So that's what Timothy is charged by the Apostle Paul to do in Ephesus. Uh, number two, to do it with a pure heart. What do we mean with a pure heart? No jealousy, don't do, it. don't do any action out of jealousy, don't do any action out of intimidation, and don't do any action because you're afraid or out of fear, okay? A pure heart. How do you have a pure heart? What's the definition of a pure heart? 
We see it in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 23. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 23, and I'll read the scripture. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Let's go to the next one, number three. Some have departed from these and have turned to meaningless talk. That's what the scripture said. I'll read it again. Some have departed from these and have turned to meaningless talk. What do we mean by meaningless talk? Well, it means deception. It means manipulation. And it's being done out of selfishness. Obviously, it's not being done out of a pure heart. So there's a hidden agenda. And that hidden agenda could come from jealousy. It could come from trying to impose intimidation and trying to impose fear. So let's go to the next item, the next item. Uh, we know that the law is good, is good if one uses it properly. Say to yourself the word properly. We know that the law is good if one uses it properly. What does that mean? We're talking about the biblical principles here, the biblical principles. Uh, the biblical principles are a fundamental truth or proposition that serves as the foundation, the foundation for a system of belief or behavior or a chain of reasoning. That's what principles mean. So I'm going to read the definition of principles again and think of it in terms of biblical principles. A fundamental truth, truth or proposition that serves as the foundation of a system of belief or behavior or for a chain of reasoning. That means there's logic to it. It's it's not based on deception. It's not based on manipulation. It is real. And let me go to the next one. The next one. In the scripture it said, we also know that the law is made not for the righteous, but for people who are contrary to the sound doctrine. Okay, so he included lawbreakers, rebels, the ungodly, sinful, the unholy, the irreligious, the murderers, the sexually immoral, the homosexual, slave traders and liars and perjurers, etc., etc., etc. The teachings and principles from the Bible is not for a category of people. It's for all of God's children because the teachings and principles are designed for correction. The correction are for those who are doing wrong. So the message is for all those people that I just mentioned. So the Bible and the teachings and principles that come out of the Bible, the sound doctrine that I'm talking about is for everyone. I'm gonna switch our focus for a moment to Little League Baseball. I remember when I was a little boy, Little League Baseball. I was never good at it. Something about the hand-eye coordination. But there's one thing I did remember. Keep your eye on the ball. You ever hear that? With baseball. Keep your eye on the ball. Well, in the church, the ball is God, right? In the church, the ball is God. Well, here are some reasons, and I'll break it down for you. God teaches us to love. What did I tell you before about love? L-O-V-E, let our voices encourage. What's that? That's an action. We need to do something. So let our voices encourage. So we need to have sound doctrine to provide the teachings and principles for others, for all of God's children. So that's the first thing. Uh, the other is, relates to a sign. I shouldn't say a sign. Uh, we see at the altar of the Resurrection Center at 1060 Worcester Street, we see worship the king, worship the king. That's at the altar. When you see the pastor preaching or you see someone else teaching, 
you'll see right at the altar, worship the king. Think of that word king. Who is king? I think of the letters K-I-N-G, king, K-I-N-G, king, K-I-N-G. What does king stand for? Keep in need of God. That means do not depart. So king stands for keep in need of God. And what is God? What is God? G-O-D, G-O-D, God. Good orderly direction. So what is king? Keep in need of God. What is God? Good orderly direction. And what is that good orderly direction? That's the sound doctrine. That's the word. It's the teachings, the principles, and the promise. Three things. Teachings, principles, and promise. So that is the good orderly direction. G-O-D, good orderly direction. Teachings, principles, and promise. That comes from sound doctrine. That's the teachings and the principles that came from the Bible. So with that, it's a good idea to keep your eye on the ball. So this means to keep sound doctrine, okay? So it guides us, it provides a guide to your character, which is how you act in front of people, not only in church, but at home. Your integrity, that's your trustworthiness. Your actions, remember actions speak louder than words. And the words out of your mouth, the words that slip out of your mouth, words have power. Okay, so now we're going to turn our attention to reasons to love sound doctrine. There's eight reasons. Maybe there's a thousand reasons, but I will just tell you eight reasons. These are the reasons to love sound doctrine. Number one, God loves sound doctrine. Obviously, it's his word. See, God provided teachings and principles. That's what the sound doctrine is. But if the teachings and principles are delivered the right way, in the way that God intended, that is what God loves. Because God is looking to correct people in the areas of their character, their integrity, their actions, and the words that come out of their mouth. See, sound doctrine flows from God's own words and revealed will in scripture. God gave us his word, that means his promise, his teachings, his principles, and sound doctrine so that we could know him. That's why God loves it. We get to know God. People ask, who's God? Sound doctrine teaches you. And we can love him. We can obey him because God gives us principles to obey and teach others about him and what he's done for us. Number two, sound doctrine matures individuals and the church. It's not just individuals, it's not just the church, it's both. Sound doctrine matures individuals in the church. As we feed on sound doctrine, that means the teachings and the principles that helps us with our character, integrity, actions, and, and the words that come out of our mouth, we have less taste uh, for theology that tickles our ears, but ultimately leaves us unsatisfied and lacking what we truly need. So false doctrine is what is not real and tickles our ears. We might want to hear something. We accept what we want to hear, in which case we're not receiving the correction or the guidance that we should be receiving. Okay, sound doctrine grows our faith. It leads us to invest time wisely for Christ and his kingdom by maturing individuals in the church into the image of Christ. Let's go to number three. Sound doctrine flows from the gospel. Where do, where do you find the gospel? In the Bible. In the Bible. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 11, 
First of Timothy chapter 1, verse 11, the scripture reads, the Apostle Paul says this, that the sound doctrine is in, in accordance with the gospel of the glory of the blessed God. That's what verse 11 says. Sound doctrine communicates gospel truths that bring us salvation. That's eternal life with Christ. Number four, it leads us to holiness. What do I mean by that? It leads us to holiness. See, correct doctrine is tied with correct living, which is what Paul means when he speaks of a knowledge of the truth, which accords with godliness. It's also shown in Titus uh, 1, chapter 1, verse 1. True doctrine from a holy God produces holy people. Again, that goes back to the character, the integrity, the actions, and the words out, out of the mouth. Okay, let's go to number five. It keeps us away from false doctrine. You see, sound doctrine flows from God himself and is both uncorrupted, untainted, not messed with, and it is life-giving. See, sound doctrine is an anchor of truth, truth, which steadies us from being tossed to and fro by the waves and is carried about by every wind of doctrine. That's in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. See, a love for sound doctrine will be the shield of, for truth. See, if you know Bible, if you know sound doctrine, then those false teachers that try to tickle your ear, they have no weapon against you. Okay, um, let's go to number six. Number six, leads to action, leads to action. Hearing the truth of scripture taught clearly will exalt the mercy and grace of God, which will cause us to be thankful and obey his commands. Okay, so what happened is if you follow the true doctrine, there's no other doctrine, the true doctrine with the teachings and principles that come strictly from the Bible, action will be taken to improve your character, your integrity, your actions, and the words that come out of your mouth. With that, people will begin to see the fruits of the Spirit. That's a blessing. They'll see the fruits of the Spirit flow out of you. Okay, uh, let's see. Number seven, it is a love for Jesus himself. His preaching involved communicating doctrine that would proclaim who he is and how his followers are to live in relation to him in the world. Let me tell you, that New Testament with Jesus' own words will guide you to the kind of teachings and principles that came directly from Jesus himself. And with that, as you receive that true doctrine, the true teachings and the true principles, and you see the blessings manifested in your life, then you too will have a true love for Jesus. Um, and because of that brings us to number eight, it ultimately leads to worship. Worship is not just the end result of doctrine. It's also the reason why it exists. Because as I said before, with the manifestation of blessings by following true doctrine that helps with character integrity, your actions that speak louder than words and the words that come out of your mouth, you will see the blessings fulfilled in your life. With that, you'll give thanks. The way you give thanks is through worship, giving thanks to the Lord. So I just finished the eight reasons to love sound doctrine. Those are the eight reasons to love sound doctrine. Now we're going to turn our attention to the three methods on how to discern the false Christians of today. Three methods on how to discern the false Christians of today. What do I mean by false Christians? False Christians are the people who say they're Christians, but their words out of their mouth 
their actions don't show it. Their character, their integrity, it doesn't show it. So I'm going to give you the three ways. The first one, we look at the works that they do. That means their action. See, actions, as I said before, actions speak louder than words. The Lord Jesus said, this is Jesus, for there shall arise false Christs. That means the false Christians. And false prophets, the people giving false prophecy, and shall now show great signs and wonders. Oh, they tickle people's ears. So that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And that's in Matthew chapter 24, verse 24. So Jesus knew that. People will try to tell people what they want to hear and lead them astray. Look at their actions. The second thing we should look at are the words that they speak. What are the words that come out of their mouth? Okay. Um, as I say, actions speak louder than words because it comes from the heart. But words can hide meanings. Actions can for example, false promises. Um, can I borrow your lawnmower? I'll return it when I'm done. <laughs> Third, we should look at the disposition they reveal. What do I mean by disposition? We talked about it before. It's the character and integrity. Character and integrity. Uh, the character is the behavior. It's the like, look at how people uh, treat the waiter or waitress at a restaurant. They're talking, just look at how they treat other people, not just you, but other people. Um, another one is the integrity. Uh, that's the trustworthiness. Um, do actions follow the words? For example, um, I'll return your lawnmower. Um, so what I've done now is I finished the three methods on how to discern false Christians of today. It's their actions, it's what they see, it's their character, their integrity. Um, you're looking at actions speak louder than words, what they do. You take a look at uh, what they're saying out of their mouth. You look at their behavior and you look at their trustworthiness, okay? Now we're gonna talk about 10 facts about false teachers. 10 facts about false uh, teachers. So scripture gives us some important information about false teachers. Um, I, I won't read all of the scriptures. There's a lot of them, but as I show the 10 facts about false teachers, you will see that what I'm about to share with you does come from the Bible. It does come from the Bible. And I'll, I'll go through this, uh, relatively quickly. Uh, number one, false teachers are skilled at presenting themselves in a positive light. I'm great. So hear what I have to say. That's what that is. Matthew chapter seven, verse 15. Number two, they have a form of godliness using scripture, including some truth with error. And that's in second of Timothy chapter three, verse one through five, that I am holy. So believe what I say. But is that true? Number three, they're often powerful individuals and Satan is usually behind their popularity. Matthew, again, chapter 24, verse 24. Is it the charisma you're following or is it the sound doctrine? Number four, they cause divisions, especially with Christians who recognize their errors. That's in Romans 16, 17 and Galatians chapter one, verse six through 10. What do I mean by that? We're better than them. Follow what we do. See, in sound doctrine, there is no separation. There is no division. There's no us and them. Uh, which brings me to number five. They have followers. They're, they have followers. Second of Corinthians chapter 11, verse three through four. And first of Timothy uh, chapter four, verse 11. We should never assume that a teacher's popularity is a sign of anointing from God. Thank goodness I'm not popular. <laughs> um, number six, they secretly introduce their false beliefs, hiding their errors with convincing explanations. And that's in second of Peter, 
verse uh, chapter 2, verse 1. Um, what that means is that people don't know Bible. Uh, they might have heard a scripture and it might come back into memory, but they really don't know Bible. And false teachers prey on that. They bank on the fact that people don't know Bible. And they get away with it. Um, so let's talk about number, where are we? Number seven. Uh, some will even claim to be the Messiah. Matthew chapter 24, verse 5. What does that mean? Uh, that means, I am the Messiah, or the Messiah has sent me, so listen to what I have to say. And that's different from, I've received revelation from the Holy Spirit that I will impart, take unto you. I'm receiving instruction from the Holy Spirit to share something with you. I'm not the Messiah. I'm the deliverer of the message. Number eight. False prophets are forerunners to the Antichrist, drawing people away from the truth. And that's 1 John chapter 2, verse 18. We live in a world of division. Don't listen to the Bible. The Bible's got it all wrong. We can take care of it. That's what I'm talking about. Number nine, they redefine Christ. Second of John, chapter 1, verse 6 through 11. Second of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 4. They redefine Christ. What does that mean? If you don't know Bible, people will tell you who Jesus is, and it won't be who Jesus says who he is. Number 10, the last one. They seldom have a biblical lifestyle. Second uh, of John, chapter 1, verse 6 through 11. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 through 20. What that means is they don't practice what they preach. They may have a facade in front of you in terms of the way they behave, but at home, they're smoking marijuana, they're drinking heavily, and they're beating up their spouse. And then the next Sunday, they come back to church teaching the gospel, the gospel. I use my air quotes. So what I've just finished, what I'm done with now, is the 10 facts about false teachers. Let's remember something. I talked about what you see at the altar at the Resurrection Center. It says, worship the king. What is king? Keep in need of God. What is God? good orderly direction. What is good orderly direction? That's the sound doctrine. That's the teachings, the principles, and the promise that come from the Bible. But we need it to be taught it. We need to learn about it. That's why we need to listen to our pastors and our teachers at the church who are instructing through sound doctrine that is revealed to them through the Holy Spirit. They're not the Messiah. They're, re they're, re they're receiving revelation from the Holy Spirit. And they impartake it on to you. Okay? So what have I done today? Let's talk about what we have done today. Our title today is No Other Doctrine. That's what happens. No Other Doctrine. Number one, we talked about the definition of doctrine. Number two, we read and we understood 1st of Timothy chapter 1, verse 1 through 10. Number three, we talked about the reasons to love sound doctrine. Number four, we talked about how to discern the false Christians of today. And number five, we talked about the 10 facts about false teachers. Remember to worship the king. And what is king? Keep in need of God. What is God? Good, orderly direction. My name is David Ewan, and this is the Resurrection Center.